Hello people, this is Self Touch and we are continuing our series on AWS Lambda. In this video, we will see about the context object inside AWS Lambda handler function. So in previous videos, we have seen what a handler function is. Basically, a handler function is the entry point inside a Lambda function, which means this function is invoked when you invoke a Lambda, Lambda function. The syntax for the handler function in Node.js environment is written like this, which accepts three arguments and the first argument is event object. The second is the context and the last is the callback method. We have seen already about the event object in previous videos and in this video we will see about the context object. So a context object in the AWS Lambda function provide the runtime information of the Lambda function like the name of the function which we are invoking. So which Lambda function which uh, you are invoking is basically a runtime information and you can get that information inside the context object of the handler function. It provides us the detail about the execution environment like what is the memory limit for my Lambda function and if I exceed this memory limit then my Lambda function will crash. So you need to understand that the details about the execution environment is present inside the context object. So the context object contains some properties and method which we'll see later on that what these properties and methods are. So it basically provides some properties and some methods. So as we have discussed that the context object provides some properties and some methods. The most important properties which we are discussing are the name of the function which we are invoking so you can get the name of the function by using context.function name. What is the version of the function? So every lambda function can have multiple version like you can create a version 1, version 2 and version 3 for the same lambda function. So if you want to know that which lambda function version I am invoking or using then you can get the information through context.function version. Every Lambda function has a unique ARN which means Amazon resource name. So you can get that information from context.invoke function ARN. ARN are basically unique identifier for any resource in AWS. Then you can get the information about the memory limit of your Lambda function from the context object. Previously we have seen that in our AWS Lambda web console we can do the configuration of our Lambda function. So there we can provide the different memory limit for our Lambda function and to access the information of that memory limit that either I have provided 10 MB to it or I either I have provided 100 MB to it. So the information can be gathered from the context object. You can also access the AWS request ID which is basically the unique request ID that AWS generates for every request in a service. So you can access that uh, request ID using context.aws request ID. You can also access the log group name. Basically, every Lambda function writes it, its log inside the AWS CloudWatch. So you can access the log group name where it is writing the logs by using the context.log group name. You can also access the log stream name using context.log stream name. Inside the method section of the context object, we are discussing only about get remaining time in millisecond, which is important to understand. So suppose this is my Lambda function, which is Lambda 1 and I have provided a timeout of 10 seconds. So timeout is a configuration of a Lambda function, which we do when you are creating the Lambda function. So I'm saying that if within 10 seconds, there is no response from the Lambda function, then please abort it. It is a very important factor because you are getting charged for that means the amount of time your Lambda function is running, you are getting charged. So if you provide a high timeout, then what AWS will see that your functions are running for a longer time. So you will charge more. So you can a better way is to uh, fix a minimum timeout time so that you are charged less. So you can get the remaining time in millisecond by using this function and you can do some uh, business logic that if uh, my lambda function is going to be timed out or going to be aborted then I can take 
some step to not provide the internal server error as an error but to provide some meaningful error that it is taking long time for your lambda function to run or something like that so you can get the information about the get remaining time in millisecond by using this function so we'll go to our aws console and we'll see the context object of aws lambda so i have already created an account in it so and i have already signed in also so i'll just go to my console to use this console you have to create an account in aws lambda and then only you can use this web console so inside my services section i will go to the lambda service and we have already created a hello world function in the previous video so we'll just go there and here you can see this was the last time where i left so this is the event object then is the context object so we are interested in context object so first what i'll do i'll just put a console log for my context object so i'll do console dot log and then i'll type context so just i'm showing you that what are the things that are present in my context object so what i'll do i'll just save and test so once it has run successfully in the bottom hand side you can see this is the log that is getting printed so you can see hello world i am learning aws lambda is printed from here and then the second details is about the context object so basically this so basically this is a object and this object has certain parameters and value so this is the first function and this is the log group name that we have seen the log stream name so my log group name is aws lambda hello world log stream name is this then the name of the function is hello world which we are saying that the name of the function is hello world and since i have not created any version for that so it is taking the latest version this is the method that we are saying get remaining time in millisecond what is the aws request id and what is the invoked function arn so we have seen that these are all the different properties that are available and we have seen this function is also available now we'll try to see that what my get remaining time in millisecond functions return so i'll go to my aws lambda console and here i'll see the configuration for my hello world function so here inside the configuration you can see inside the add one section the timeout is given to be four second so if within a period of four second the response is not being given by the aws lambda function then my lambda function will get terminated so what i'll do i'll just do context console dot console log context dot get remaining time in millis so this is the function that aws lambda context ob object gives me and i can get the remaining time or the time after which my aws lambda mm -hmm. will get terminated so i'll save and test it and this will give me a time in millisecond that is 3998 so because my timeout second was 4 seconds so it is giving me lesser than that now what i'll do i'll print it multiple times so I'll just copy it and then I'll do paste, paste. Again, I'll run it. So you can see that it is getting updated every time I see. Uh, I do a console log for that. So it is 97, 96, 96 and then 96. So just I'm showing you that you can take some uh, uh, business logic according to the timeout seconds that are remaining. So this was all about the context object of aws lambda we have seen these properties and these methods uh, so if you like my channel please subscribe to it and if you like my video please give a thumbs up thank you happy coding